What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Corey and today we're going to be taking a look at the Hoka One One Torrent 2. Weighing in at just over 9.3 ounces in the men's size 9 is a second rendition of a very popular shoe from the Hoka Torrent 2. Right out of the box, you can see the new overlay system and the color scheme for the new shoe. It's going to have a thicker upper from the mesh material, being more reinforced this year, versus the last year's model, which is a lot more breathable, but this year has a lot more durability to it. Last year's model, you didn't see too many flaws as far as the durability of the shoe. Of the upper, you didn't see too many holes being put in, but this year they definitely went above and beyond and put a little bit more fabric retention across that upper. So you're definitely going to have a little bit more breathability issues. Not too much. I didn't notice a lot on my run. A lot of people were saying that the upper was going to make your foot really warm and that running outside yesterday with this shoe at high elevation, I could notice that it was a little warmer than most men's other shoes, but that upper being a little bit more reinforced made it a lot more durable compared to some of the other shoes that I run up in the mountains with. The top overlay that you see right here goes all the way around the shoe and it really helps against those muddy conditions or even the small slightest rocks that you're going to encounter on the trails. Along with that meshed upper, you're going to get a new lacing system not quite different than last year's model, but these laces are definitely stout. Like I said before in my reviews, I like to do just one knot when I test out a shoe to make sure that I know if it's going to loosen up during the run at all. And this shoe, when I tied it down, it did a great job of just staying still. My foot wasn't sliding around the toe box at all or anything like that. It felt really tied down as far as my upper went. The only downfall I would say with the laces is that without going to the second eyelid on the corner, these laces are pretty long. So if you don't need a strong tie down as far as when you're lacing up your shoes, you might find that these laces are going to be kind of in the way. But if you go to this second eyelet here, I think you'll be just fine as far as where the laces actually are positioned when you're running. Especially if you do a runner's knot, a runner's knot is going to take away a lot of this extra space. And I think you're going to have a, a strong lockdown and minimal laces showing around that's going to be hitting up on your heel or anything like that. The lugs on the bottom aren't going to be the Vibra material that you usually see on the Speed Goat 4 but these lugs alone show that they can go through a lot of different terrain, like slippery rock, wet rock, high elevation gains, a lot of scree rock when you're coming down mountains, and going over boulders is a really good shoe to have. I found that the lug system on the bottom was very beneficial to have on the mountain trails that I like to go up on at high elevation. They're not gonna slide on a lot of the slippery rock and they're gonna go through mud very easily, and you're gonna have plenty of grip when you're going over boulders or going through passes to get through like another trail. And the lugs aren't too cumbersome to where you're not gonna be able to run on like a flat single track, you're going to find that these shoes can do well on a buffed out trail still. As far as the fit goes, you're going to find that your heel really retains itself in that back pocket. The upper, like I said before, these laces are so stout that when you tie them down, the top of your foot is going to be really secure, so you're not going to be moving around up there as well. The toe box still had plenty of give to where I could spread my toes out, but it wasn't restricted in any way. Right out of the box in my Hoka shoes, I usually find that my pinky toe pressed against the outside of the shoe for the first month or so while it's breaking in. My feet were still locked down and they didn't have any discomfort whatsoever. And like I was saying about the lugs before, during my runs with the shoe, I haven't had any problem with finding grip or torque as far as being able to plant my foot where I need to and not slide at all. I thought the shoe was great for climbing, especially in those free situations, like I said, with loose rock. I didn't have any problem finding traction along with finding some snow patches and a lot of mud. This shoe held up through it all. The only thing I will say about the fit is that I actually had to go back and get a size nine. Every other Hoka shoe that I've had, I've been in a nine and a half. I didn't have any size difference in any other Hoka shoes that I've worn. This was the exception. I had to go down to a size nine. The first run I did in the size nine and a half, I felt like this shoe was so long. When I was going on a lot of hill descents, my toes would go all the way forward and my heel would slide forward as well. So this is the only time I've actually had to size down in a Hoka shoe, but ever since then I've had no problems. So that brings us to the price point. It retails at $120. But if you actually go to Roadrunner Sports, you can sign up for their VIP program for 20 bucks a year. And that way you get 10% off shoes, 10% back in your pocket, and you get a 90 day trial period. So with that, these shoes actually ran me $107. Compared to the Wild Horse 6s that I reviewed last week, those actually were $120. 
and I actually got those on sale at Rotor Sports for $98. And with that, this is going to be about $25 less than the very popular Hoka Speedgoat. They just came out with the fourth rendition, and that one I know has been a really solid shoe so far. It is going to have that V-Brim bottom, which is going to be a lot grippier than this shoe. But as far as the weight goes, this is actually going to weigh in a lot lighter. I know in the Speedgoats, they're a great trail running shoe, but as far as the bottom and being able to feel the rocks underneath your feet, there's almost a separation between having to feel the ground when you run in those. When I trail run, I like to feel the ground as little as possible, but still be able to feel in tune with the trail. And so I think this kind of fits the bill a little better, but still have a feel of the trail while you're on it. One other thing I like about this shoe is that it's not so much a Hoka as you would think. A lot of the Hoka shoes that you see out there, the stack height is so high, kind of like the Hoka Clifton's. This is probably one of their most famous road running shoe out there right now. And what a lot of people love about the Clifton's, even me, I love that you can use this for any day of the week. If you want to do your long up-tempo runs, you want to do recovery run, you want to do a couple like different speed workouts, this shoe pretty much works great for everything. I think this shoe could be the everyday trainer as far as trail runners go. From what Hoka has done with the Clifton in their road running series. So who is this shoe meant for? I'd say anybody. If you like to go on trails, if you like to go high elevation, you like to go up to the mountains, if you like to hike, if you wanna just wear a shoe out of your house to run to the trail to actually get to the path, this is the shoe for you. So going forward, along with the Wild Horse Sixes, I think this is going to be this year's go-to shoe for me. I have a bunch of 14ers planned for this year, and I think this is going to be the shoe that gets me there. For maybe more of the fast single track, I'll be going back to the Wild Horse Sixes. But if I were to just have these in my car, these would be perfectly fine to use on any day. And with that being said, that's my review of the Hoka Torn 2. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share my page. I have a few more 14ers that will be coming up in the future, and I'll be sure to post those. But make sure to check into the page whenever you can. And thank you guys so much for sticking around, and hope you have a great day. Yeah.